you know, the efficiency, if I may, of this uh, committee, which you, you tell us Taoiseach has met uh, six times in the last 12 months. And it has responsibility, as you know, for housing, for planning and for mortgage uh, arrears. Now, patently, if we judge, and I listen keenly to the figures that you uh, produced earlier on, but if we judge it on, on results, the fact is that almost four family homes are being repossessed or surrendered every day. That's fact. And according to the figures from the Central Bank, 351 <coughs> homes were repossessed in the first quarter of this year. And 104,963 family homes are in mortgage or ours. And that figure keeps growing. That's a real threat to the well-being and to the, the health and the security of, of the families involved. And the central bank figures also reveal that when the banks agree to restructuring, they rely more and more on RR's capitalisation and, and split mortgages, which I'm sure you will agree are the least fair and the least uh, sustainable. And then, of course, the high variable mortgage rates contribute to the overall crisis in the mortgage uh, RR's crisis that's going on at this, at this point. Now, the government last week voted down what I consider to be a thoughtful bill, the Central Bank Mortgage Interest Rates Bill by Sinn Féin, which would have enabled the Central Bank to direct those banks bailed out by the state. The, these are banks that theoretically the citizens own, that they would have uh, had to lower or to cap mortgage interest uh, rates. Because, and I think you have acknowledged this, Irish homeowners are paying over the odds for these interest rates compared to other uh, EU countries. Uh, and indeed, you, you have said that the refusal of some banks to cut interest rates is a very serious matter and it would not be tolerated. We are not happy, nor is it acceptable, that you should have a position that banks are charging mortgage and mortgage holders a much higher rate than they are able to borrow right now. So then we measure what has been done about that. The second uh, responsibility, and I, I, I agree with you in, in what you said, although it's a very obvious thing you said in relation to homelessness, the real problem is the supply of houses. And I, I agree with that. And we know, and I think it was Father McVerry said maybe a year ago that he saw different people now becoming homeless because, unfortunately, and there but for the grace of God go all of us, some people fall into homelessness because of addiction problems or mental health problems or physical health problems or problems in their own home. Uh, but what we have seen now are, are people who have fallen into homelessness simply because they cannot afford to pay the rent if a family member becomes ill or if their social welfare is cut or if their rent supplement is cut and so on and so forth. And last month, and it was a record, 71 families in the capital here presented as homelessness. We have 1,000 children in emergency accommodation and the average worker in Dublin now pays half their wages in, in rent. And then I have to again look at how, how the Minister deals with this. In April, the Minister for the Environment published the social housing targets for local authorities. And that included 57 million for my own constituency, for the constituency which I'm privileged to represent, which Minister Kelly claimed would provide 778 housing units and reduce the current waiting list by 20%. However, the figures he was working on were outdated. At the end of March, there were 4,636 households on the Louth waiting list. 20% of this is 927. That's 139 more than the Minister claims his strategy will provide. And the fact is, his housing strategy, in Louth anyway, is based on outdated waiting list figures that were collected by the Housing Agency almost two years ago 
in May 2013. They are not contemporary figures. So would the Taoiseach agree that this is a serious uh, flaw? It means that beyond the wit that someone in the department would phone up uh, someone on Louth County Council for an up-to-date figure for the housing waiting list. Of the 778 units announced for Louth, only 288 or 36 per cent will be provided under capital programmes. The majority will come from the private sector. 443 will come from the housing leasing initiative and 47 from the rental accommodation scheme. And that will provide a huge challenge for Louth County uh, Council, because reports indicate that there is already a major shortage Concordia, of private housing for rent, with many private landlords preferring to rent or to lease on the private market where there is more profit to be made. And this reliance on the private sector totally is at odds with the Minister's position six months ago, when he warned the privatisation of social housing should never have happened. It was wrong. And it was more than wrong, it was simply unacceptable, and we are going to change that. This is the Minister, John Collier, just six months ago saying the privatisation of social housing is wrong, unacceptable, and we are going to change that. So if it was wrong six months ago, why is the Labour Minister responsible for housing and government policy now almost entirely reliant on private housing markets to provide social housing? in life. So there, there are two issues Concordia, when we look at the efficiency of this uh, committee. Yes, it has met for six times in the last 12 months, but we have to measure it in terms of how it's been able to address or redress or reverse the crisis that we have in terms of uh, private rent, the crisis we have in terms of mortgage distress, and the ongoing crisis that there is in terms of homelessness. And I would like if the Taoiseach could to address some of those issues without getting into the business of the committee, but just to give us some measurement of how the government strategically tackles these big issues. This is a very difficult type of question to manage, as you'll appreciate. appreciate yeah. Uh, strictly speaking, questions in relation to policy issues pertaining to the various cabinet committees should and must be directed to the relevant minister. In other words, we can't, you know, through asking when did the committee meet last, we can't then have a general discussion about housing policy, so, or any other policy for that matter. But I try to allow a little bit of flexibility, but I'd ask members, please, to remember that the Taoiseach's only obligation uh, and requirement is to give the notice of the number of meetings that were actually held. Full stop. Now, I mean, the Taoiseach has expanded as well, I have to say, but that is, I'm applying by the rules here, so I appreciate that. And that is why, I have to say, we have a backlog of questions to the Taoiseach here, and I'm trying to get through them so that other issues can be raised of a, in a very important nature. I, I, know, I, I know you're drawing on all your years. I know. I know. I know, I know experience all of that, here. But you know, unfortunately, I have the job of, of, I, I of chairing the session. I know you're drawing on all your years of experience here to, to, to define a very, a very narrow line. But I, 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 it is a, a point of. It's a point of. Um, it's a point of interest, I suppose, that the deputies want okay. to ask questions, and we can give them perhaps some facts that are. If you like, uh, uh, distinct from uh, a, a debate on government policy on housing, so maybe I might be able to help Deputy Adams with some of those figures so that he can yeah. he can go further. Thank you, Cancola. Um, obviously, it's, a, it's regrettable that anybody should lose a, <coughs> should lose a house. Uh, the key to preventing this is actually engagement with the lending institutions. Uh, some cases end up in legal proceedings precisely because people uh, may not have fully grasped what is necessary in terms of maintaining communication with a, a lending institution, be it a bank or whatever. It's important that people realise that, that the initiation of legal proceedings doesn't actually mean that people's homes are going to be possessed, repossessed. Now, Deputy Adams mentioned, I think, 25 per cent, one in four is what you said. Well, this, the central bank statistics actually show that 313 principal dwelling houses were repossessed on foot of a court order in 2014. 
and this represents less than 0.3% of the total number of family homes in arrears at the end of 2014. In 2015, uh, the number of principal dwelling houses repossessed on foot of a court order was 156, while a further 195 were voluntarily surrendered or abandoned. Um, and in quarter one of 2015, 206 buy-to-let properties were taken into possession by lenders. 123 were repossessed on foot of a court order, um, while the remaining 83 properties were voluntarily surrendered or, or abandoned. And there are buy-to-let properties which are different, I think, than the um, obviously than the principal dwelling houses. Um, so, um, what what have government actually uh, actually um, put through here to help this situation. Now, the Personal Solvency Act was passed in 2012. The legislation introduces three new forms of non-judicial debt settlement arrangements. The Act reduces, as you know, the, uh, the automatic discharge for bankruptcy from 12 years to three years. The Insolvency Service was established to regulate those new debt settlement arrangements. The ISI report that there have been 328 personal insolvency arrangements the main mechanism to deal with secure debt approved up to the end of quarter one, 2015. A total of 821 arrangements have been made to date, including debt relief notices, debt settlement arrangements and so on. Obviously, the uh, Minister is now working on changes uh, to introduce uh, further options to deal with longer-term mortgage, um, mortgage, um, um, mortgages that are in arrears. Uh, the introduction of a mortgage to rent scheme facilitates families to stay in their homes by the transfer of ownership to a local authority or approved housing body. At the end of May, about 2,800 cases had been put forward, and of those, 2,000 had been progressed. As part of the, the government package on mortgage arrears announced last month by the Minister, the scheme is to be amended so that more properties qualify through an increase in valuation thresholds and greater flexibilities in relation to the size of properties that actually qualify, for example, to allow for an extra bedroom. The development of mortgage arrears information and advisory service, including the website, helpline, uh, advice service, there were 238,000 visits made to that website since uh, June of 2012. Um, earlier this year, the central bank set out new requirements for the banks to meet. The requirements are that concluded sustainable solutions should be in place for the vast majority of distressed borrowers by the end of this year, 2015. Um, where legal action is taken that may result in loss of ownership for a borrower, the bank should be prepared to re-engage with the borrower and explore alternative solutions if the borrower re-engages. Uh, by, re by year end, 75% of uh, concluded solutions should be meeting their terms and banks must comply with the code of conduct on mortgage arrears and to engage fully and appropriately as set out in the Personal Insolvency uh, Act of 2012. Um, you mentioned about uh, Dublin, uh, Deputy Adams. This obviously is of great concern uh, to both Minister Kelly and Minister Coffey. It's not just an issue of concern to our citizens, it has implications all over for competitiveness uh, for the country. Because as you're aware, uh, the line of investment into the country here is very strong. Um, in the Dublin area, and the greater Dublin area in particular, there have been some very significant um, investment uh, announcements made in the past two years, and all of these require housing, office space, infrastructure, which is um, a fundamental part of the whole um, of the whole construction sector. Um, obviously, the new planning legislation that's being advanced now by the by the Minister for the Environment, bolstered by measures in Budget 2015, a number of things there are the National Framework for Housing Supply. Uh, the housing will be based on, on timely and accurate data, an annual statement of projected supply and demand. The Minister has established the Housing Supply Coordination Task Force for Dublin, meets every Monday morning providing for a joined-up approach in the Dublin area with an immediate focus on addressing supply and demand imbalances. Uh, the Urban Regeneration and Housing Bill aim primarily at uh, addressing the current shortage uh, in housing supply was published two weeks ago with a view to facilitating an increase in the housing construction sector, particularly here in Dublin. 
it targeted for um, the revision of Part 5 obligation for developers in relation to social and affordable housing, which will contribute an estimated 4,000 housing units to the delivery of the targets in the social housing strategy. It called for a change to the regime for development contributions so that reduced rates can be applied to existing planning permissions and incentives and penalties aimed at encouraging the development of vacant and underutilised sites in, in urban areas. And the planning and development number two bill will be published before the summer recess. That provides for the establishment of a new office of the planning regulator. will provide for enhanced transparency in the streamlining of the planning system, including the, the reduction of durations of planning permissions which are not progressed properly, uh, you know, a use it or lose it approach. Uh, and improve the availability of social housing clearly is a key priority for the government. Uh, ministers announced an additional 2.2 billion was announced for social housing in the budget uh, last year and a social housing strategy was published in November 2014. Uh, that strategy builds on the provisions contained in the budget of 2015 and it sets out clear and measurable targets to increase the supply of social housing, to reform the delivery arrangements and to meet the housing needs of all households on the housing lists. The strategy targets over 110,000 social housing units through the delivery of 35,000 new social housing units and meeting the housing needs of about 75,000 households through the housing assistance payment and the rental accommodation scheme. Uh, the implementation of this strategy will address the needs of the 90,000 households on the waiting list in full with flexibility to meet future potential demand. Um, so a provisional allocation of 1.5 billion for all housing local authorities was announced in April to meet an ambitious delivery target of 22,883 social housing units out of 2017. Within this, the combined programme for Dublin comes to over 500 million, as part of which 117 million was allocated to the four Dublin local authorities in early May in respect of 19 build projects, which will see the development of about 566 new units of accommodation. The Minister has actually given the local authorities their money and told them to get on with it in terms of social, uh, social housing provision. Uh, in addition to that, the four Dublin local authorities have been allocated nearly £6 million to, to bring 345 properties back into use this year, and over €15 million Euro has been provided for Dublin across a range of other housing schemes, including works to improve housing efficiency for people with disabilities, as well as retrofitting homes to uh, improve energy efficiency. The Home Innovation Re Renovation Incentive has been extended. The scheme will now be available to landlords for work carried out until the end of 2015. Uh, there was a removal of 80%. The 80% the windfall tax was removed, which applied to chargeable gains at the disposal of the development of land, which are attributable to planning decisions. The 33% rate of capital gains tax and other standard taxation arrangements will now apply. And this will hopefully remove any disincentive to selling land that might otherwise be put to good use. Uh, the, uh, there's support for first-time buyers with the introduction of a refund for deposit interest retention tax on savings used to purchase a home. And there was the launch of the Living City Initiative, which is a new urban regeneration incentive which focuses on the regeneration of the historic centres of six cities, Waterford, Limerick, Kilkenny, Galway, Dublin and Cork. Um, so we don't want to see anybody you know, sitting on land for the purpose of driving prices higher and cashing in. The Minister for Finance has therefore held a public consultation on whether this issue needs to be addressed and in what way it should be addressed. And he's indicated that he will examine the taxation measures that might be taken to penalise landowners who do not develop land that is already zoned and service if that is required. So these are some of the issues that government have actually put in place to address this. But as we all know, you're not going to deal with it unless you put blocks, concrete and houses on the ground. And that's why all of the focus of the Minister for the Environment and the Minister for Housing is to deal with this urgent priority. So while 20,000 extra people have now been employed in the last 12 months in the construction sector, clearly uh, there is a need now uh, to, uh, for him to prioritise which he's doing. Uh, the issues in respect of the planning bill, uh, the incentives for 
builders to get down to work and meet the demand that's there for private and for social housing. We've allocated the money to the local authorities. They have their directions. They have their targets. They have their land. Get on with it. And we have to look at the other question of how you can meet the demand, both in the Greater Dublin area and beyond. And the Minister's addressing that very, very vigorously. Deputy Boyd Barrett. Taoiseach, uh, the reason we're asking you this question and